Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. But before our story begins, we would like to ask you a question. Do you shudder when you see the price tags on sheets and towels these days? Then those high prices are one reason for giving all your household linens White King Wash Day Care. White King has been a good washing machine soap, a good wash day soap for 30 years. Today, it is better than ever actually improved in quality. You will like White King because it dissolves so quickly and completely in your wash water. Because it makes quantities of suds that eagerly wash off surface dirt and wash out hidden dirt. And White King washes so quickly and so gently, it protects your household linens, keeps them looking new longer. Just try White King. We know you'll say, I love that soap. Abandoned by their treacherous Arab guides while on a search for the precious emerald, Frank Chandler and the regents run into deadly peril when a sudden storm blows up in the endless Sahara. As the storm subsides, a new danger threatens. Their water supply is very low. Chandler, known in the east as Chandu the Magician, contacts a message from Princess Naji miles away in Cairo and learns that Mustafa the Thief is also out in the desert. Summoning all his magic powers, Chandu forces Mustafa to return the great emerald. Now it is the following night. Frank Chandler stands outside the tent where Abdallah, the young Bedouin chief, lies resting after being at the point of death out on the desert sands. Chandu, the magician. Abdallah. Yeah, I thought you might be asleep. Don't get up. I am ashamed to show such weakness as disgrace to a Bedouin. Oh, come now. Even a Bedouin's human. I'll sit down, too, if you'll feel better about it. Betty Betak. Oh, Bob, I don't believe it. All right, come over to the fire. I'll show you. All right, come on. She is gay, Miss Betty Lou. Abdullah, what possessed you to leave camp alone, on foot? If we hadn't seen you when we did, you'd have died of thirst out there. I thought to bring Mustafa to you with the emerald. But if you knew he had it... I followed him to be sure. Why? If I could have brought the emerald back to you, I would not bring shame upon the word of a Bedouin. You needn't have risked your life to prove it. But Chandu... Do you think I'd have left all the arrangements for this trip in your hands if I hadn't trusted you? In Cairo, after you had sent me to find the hiding place of Roxor, you followed my steps in the streets. Not because I didn't believe you. I was sent to follow you. Aye. Are you saying you will permit me to join you with my fighting men, my camels, my fine horses? I told you I wasn't recruiting an army, Abdallah. But my men... The work I'm doing is confidential. Secret. It is not a secret from Ratsor, Chandu. Indeed it is. Now listen to me, Abdallah. If you join me, you must understand that I will not answer questions about my work. The world will someday know. But until then... I swear to serve you without question, O Chandu. Why, Tenebi, by the life of the prophet. Very well. Now, I want you to get some rest. We're leaving for Cairo early in the morning. Halala. How have you sent to Cairo for guides? As soon as Princess Nadja knew we needed help, she sent it. Hifta, Enoch, beware of her chandu. Raksor has told me she is a sorceress. I know. Allah, you know. Yes, but don't worry about it. Sleep well, my friend. We'll see you in the morning. Yamanilla. How's Abdallah now, Uncle Frank? He'll be fine by morning, I think. Are you getting pretty thirsty? We're trying not to think about it. Uncle Frank, a whole flock of Arabs just came along and we went over to see them. Look, beyond our fire. Oh, yes. Well, I'll go over and speak to them. They might let us have some water. We can give it back when the plane comes. We tried to talk to them, but they just goggled at us. Well, maybe I'll have better luck. Gee, he's like a different person since he got the emerald back. Do you know that? Thirsty or not? Yeah. 
Oh, for Pete's sake, don't just sit down in the sand beds. Oh, my clothes are so sandy, it doesn't matter anymore. Bob, Abdallah's been working with Roxor ever since he was 16 years old. How do you know that? Mother told me. I guess Abdallah told them the story of his life the night he came to Najee's. And just think, because of me, he won't work with Roxor anymore. Now, wait a minute. You know, I never thought I was so glamorous at home. Look, leave us face it. You're probably the first American girl Abdallah ever saw to talk to. What? So you're not necessarily Rita Hayworth. Oh, I might know you'd say that. You just spoil everything. Oh, ah, Betty, don't you realize Abdallah's in that tent behind you? Oh. Here, I brought you some water. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Uncle Frank. I didn't mean to talk so loud. It tastes kind of funny, but it's water. Here you are, Bob. Thanks. Abdallah's exhausted, although he won't admit it. And we're going to have a long trek tomorrow. Where's your mother? In her tent. I wonder if Abdallah knows I was the one who saw him in the crystal yesterday when Uncle Frank magic fat Mustafa. Oh, we all saw him. Oh. Here, I'll take it to Mom. Now, do you want to know what we're going to do tonight? Do? Hmm? For Pete's sake, what can we do in the desert? There are some musicians and a storyteller, Bob, with that camel train over there. A storyteller? Oh, what fun. And they're on their way to Cairo to make their fortunes, they said. Will he tell us one of those fabulous stories like Abdallah did? Yeah. Oh, maybe Mom would like to hear it. Well, she can listen from her tent if she does. Oh, I'll tell her. She might want to come out and see the show. You know, Uncle Frank, I can understand people being crazy about the desert, like those friends of yours. It's so big and still and kind of... Oh, I don't know. I've known desert people to die when they had to live in cities. The stars are so big and close. They remind me of California. You homesick, honey? Oh, not exactly. But it's so wonderful out here tonight, it makes me kind of sad. Oh, you mustn't be sad. I'll go and ask the storyteller to begin. Just wait until you hear it. <sighs> Miss Betty Lou. Oh, Abdallah, where are you? Inside the tent behind you, little white rose. Oh, dear. Beautiful white flower. Abdallah, you mustn't call me things like that anymore. My mother doesn't like it. But you, Mimosa Blossom, do you... Oh, hush, be quiet. My uncle's coming back. Already, Betty. See the storyteller in his red burnous? Oh, isn't this terrific? He reminds me of the red shadow in the desert song. The desert song? Uh-huh. Well, you couldn't possibly remember that. No, we put it on at school last year. I was in it. And you know, the red shadow turned out not to be a reef after all. He was French. I know. Uncle Frank, do you think Abdallah might not be a Bedouin? Maybe he's French or something, too. <laughs> It's a good thing your mother didn't hear you say that. Well... Abdullah's a better one, all right, so don't get any notions in your head. Uh, listen to the storyteller. I tell a tale of Arabia, heard in my wanderings at the time of my pilgrimage to Mecca. And the name of my story is... The Eyes of Kutne. He's not as good as Abdallah was. Ah, who shall describe the eyes of Gudne, deep as twin pools at the oasis, now soft as velvet, now shining with the fire of salt. He's picturesque, you'll have to admit, Betty. To no man would her brother give the hand of Gudne, so fair was she. So like a little bird of many-colored plumage that sits like a feather at the edge of the nest. Swaying in the sunlight. Oh, that's beautiful. Then one night came a man of the Ruala and stole her from her tent. Empty was a nest of Putne, and the women wept while the men shot in their swords. Look over there at Bob, Uncle Frank. This is the kind of story he likes. With the coming of night, when the men of good days drive forth from their black tents, when the sun rose, it struck fire from their lifted swords as they fell upon the camp of the Ruala, and the rocks heard their wild cry. must know the Ruala were mighty, and the tribe of Goodness' brother could not conquer them at once. 
But at last they overcame the enemy, and with the setting sun they forced the Ruwala to lead them to the tent where Gutne lay. For years of Gutne they cried. But alas, the beautiful deep eyes of Gutne, soft as velvet and flashing as a fire of swords, were closed. Never to open more. When their eyes beheld this, they went out from the tent, and not one Ruala was left alive. Oh, how awful. Even today, he who goes to that strange and desolate valley may hear at night fall the terrible cry. For the eyes of goodness. And may see about him the avengers of goodness tribe and the slain Ruala on the ground like grains of sand. Oh, Uncle Frank, it's really sad. Why, darling, it's only a story. Well, look, honey, I'll go and ask the musicians to play something different for you. Shall I? Would you mind? Well, of course not. I'll be back in a minute. Miss Betty Lou. Oh, Abdallah, are desert people that cruel? For the honor of his people, a man may kill rejoicing. Oh, don't sound so fierce. But there is more in desert life than killing little white rose. In my oasis, my house has a garden with trees that blossom and with their petals spread the very perfume of love. Oh, it sounds beautiful. But you know I... Miss Betty Lou, you heard how the storyteller spoke with the eyes of Gutney. Uh-huh. Then listen well. Your eyes are two stars that lift my eyes to heaven. Oh! They are two wells of delight where my heart drowns gladly. Abdallah, you know you mustn't talk to me like that. No one knows I speak to you, Mimosa Blossom. Your mother and your brother do not see me here in the deep shadow of the tent. They do not know I live but to hear the cadence of your laughter, like a waterfall in paradise, but you... Stop, Abdallah. I'll have to call my uncle. Your voice is the south wind across a rose. Your hands are butterflies. You are... And now, before we say goodnight for Chandu the Magician... We have a bedtime story for all you mothers of small babies. A true story about White King granulated soap. We do not have to tell you that babies require lots of diapers and that diapers require lots of washing in rich, gentle soap suds. That means that mothers require lots of White King because the very same soap you like so much for washing clothes and dishes is safe for washing baby diapers, too. In fact, it is so very safe that many maternity wards of hospitals suggest that mothers use White King for washing baby clothes. White King suds are gentle suds. They wash baby clothes sweet and clean, and then all the soil and all the soap suds are rinsed away freely and completely in your rinse water. Yes, just as surely as you love your baby... You will love White King for washing baby clothes. Chandu the Magician is produced and directed by Cyril Armbruster. Betty Lou Regent is played by Joy Terry. The storyteller was played by Lou Krugman. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu. The Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.